Hi, this is Patrick Sullivan. Welcome to my shop. Details very often make the difference between ho-hum woodwork and stunning pieces worthy of a museum. This is true whether you're making jewelry boxes, furniture, clocks, musical instruments, inlay work, or some kind of sculpture. Very small chisels, knives, and gouges suitable for highly detailed carving, inlay, and other precision woodworking are hard to find and often either expensive or of shoddy quality. Today I'm going to show you how you can make your own. The process is surprisingly easy and it does not require specialized tools or metalworking experience. I've made a lot of these miniature tools and I'll show you exactly how I do it. We will make some blades of different shapes and in subsequent videos we'll harden and temper the steel and put on nice handles to turn them into tools you can be proud of. We are going to make these three blades today. All you need is a hacksaw, some ordinary files, and a few pieces of sandpaper. A small vise that you can clamp to your work table is very helpful. Oh, and you'll need some steel. Now, I realize that there are dozens of videos out there that propose making knives and tools out of scrap steel, old saw blades and files, and junk you've salvaged from a dumpster. This is a terrible idea for this project. You won't know what kind of steel it is or how to harden it, and you may end up with a tool that will just not hold an edge. Buy O1 steel from a reputable supplier. There are dozens of online sources. Amazon is a perfectly reasonable choice. I have also bought tool steel from online metals and small parts. You'll know exactly what you're getting, and it comes annealed, which means dead soft, or much easier shaping. Why O1 steel? There are dozens of other fine tool steels. However, O1 is cheap and readily available in a wide range of sizes. It is one of the easiest steels to heat treat, and it's easy to sharpen. A blank for one tool will cost you about a dollar. Start by ordering one or two pieces of 1 8 inch rod. You will only need about three inches for each blade. Eighth inch rod is perfect for most miniature and micro tools. Now, a long length of 1 8 inch rod feels somewhat flexible. Is it really stout enough to cut hard wood? To demonstrate just how strong and stiff the finished tool will be, I have hung a rather large cast iron vise from the blade, and you can see that there is no deflection whatsoever. Keep in mind that these tools are not designed to take the abuse of general duty bench chisels. They are not designed to be beaten. They are not designed to be used as levers to pry out large chunks of wood. They are designed to take light cuts for paring, shaving, trimming, and other detail work. The tools that we will make will only have an inch and a half of blade exposed. If you need much longer tools, such as this awl that I made, you should use a little heavier material. The awl is made from 3 16 stock. Here's a little tip. If your supplier doesn't stock any fractional sizes between 1 8 and 3 16 look for metric sizes. Four millimeters is almost exactly halfway in between. It's twice as stiff as 1 8 while 3 16 is five times as stiff for the same length. In my experience, the most useful single tool is a skew chisel. So let's start with a small skew with bevels on both sides like a knife. Watch how easy it is to shape this very simple tool using only ordinary hand tools. First, we take our eighth inch blank and file the end off at an angle to create a skewed edge. How much of an angle is entirely up to you. Next, we will rotate the blank 90 degrees and file a tapered flat on both sides to create a chisel point. I typically make these flat sides about three quarters of an inch long, although there's no magic to that measurement. Mark a piece three inches in length and cut it with a hacksaw. First, file the end off at an angle to create a skewed edge. Next, turn the blank 90 degrees and taper one side. Repeat this process on the other side. Do not bother to make the blade maximally sharp at this point. We can do that later. The file will leave a rough surface. Sand the surfaces smooth, starting with 220 grit. Move on to 320 grit and finish with 600 grit sandpaper, which will leave a reasonably polished surface. At this point, the edge should be well shaped and almost sharp. If you like the shape on the left, or just need a wider blade than 1 8 inch, 
I will show you a simple technique for achieving this. Place the rod on a small anvil or any kind of steel plate and pound the end of the rod with a hammer. Turn the rod frequently and strike the other side to keep the tapered end centered and straight. Then file the end to the skew angle that you prefer. The hammered surface will have dimples and defects. File these smooth, ensuring a nice taper from the round rod shank to the flat blade edge. If you want any additional shaping, a few touches with a flat or a round file should be all it takes. Now sand the surfaces exactly as I showed you before, 220, then 320, then 600 grit. It should take only a few minutes. When you finish, your blade should look like this. Finally, for my last example, let's discuss shaping a gouge, somewhat more complicated shape. First, we will cut away a long bevel on the top of the blank, almost down to the halfway mark on the end. Looking at the blank from the end, we will file a round groove in the center of the flat. The curved line will become the finished edge. Finally, we will create the curved bevel on the bottom. Cutting the flat on the top is just like beveling the sides on the skew. It takes just a couple of minutes. I then mark the center line. I cut a shallow groove with a small triangular file on the center line mark. This little notch will help guide the round file, which we will use next, until it forms enough of a hollow to keep it on track. When you have excavated enough steel to form the general shape, use sandpaper wrapped around a small drill bit to smooth out the file marks. Again, 220 to 320 to 600 grit. Finally, turn the blank over and file the curved bevel, bringing it up to very near the bottom of the groove. The exact shape of this bevel is not critical, and it can be adjusted later. The bevel at the bottom of the blade does need to be smoothed with sandpaper, in the same fashion we have done with all the other surfaces. Remember, it will ride directly on the wood and it needs to be polished smooth. Okay, that's it. You can see how you can cut just about any shape you need, typically with just a few minutes work. In a future video, I hope to cover making flat blades that cut on their side. The next video in this series will show how to harden and temper the blades you have made.